What's up guys? If you follow me on Instagram, you know that I recently posted a video on IGTV talking about liver, how your liver can affect your performance, how the liver can get stressed, and how blood work doesn't always tell the whole story when it comes to uh, liver function. And that last point actually got me a lot of feedback through DMs. A lot, a lot of people who don't, do not use any type of anabolic steroids they were noticing when they went to the doctor and got a routine blood test that, hey, their, their liver enzymes are elevated and their doctors asked, hey, do you drink a lot? You know, are you taking some type, type, sort of medication? And they didn't really know what was up. So I want to give you guys some possible, I really want to stress this, possible reasons why your blood work could come back a little bit off regardless of whether you use anabolic steroids or not. And I want to caution you. Talk to a doctor, talk to a doctor, talk to a doctor. If your doctor can't give you a good answer, talk to a different doctor. Find a knowledgeable doctor who works with strength athletes who have above average demands on their bodies and above average physical capacities, above average muscle mass. This is very, very important. You are not someone who is just in the common population, right? You are not average. You are trying to be different, to be better than average. And as a result, you know, these standards for blood work that are based on the average person aren't always going to reflect what your body should, quote unquote, should, uh, you know, be, be showing on these tests. So today we're going to talk about both liver tests and kidney tests because they both can be a little bit misleading in certain circumstances. And I want to clear some of that up. We'll start with liver, and if you haven't watched my video on IGTV, please go watch that because I cover a lot of the basics, but I'm going to touch on it again here. Um, so you guys probably know that when you take oral anabolic steroids, your livers get stressed um, often. Not all oral steroids do this, but most <clears throat> are methylated, and your liver has to remove the methyl group. I'm not going to get into the chemistry of it. <laughs> methylated oral steroids stress your liver out. And people know this, and so that's why when they're on cycle, they take stuff like milk thistle or hopefully something better like Tudka. Um, but that's not the only thing that can stress your liver out. Your liver is actually an organ that processes a lot of crap, for lack of a better term. So I'm sure you guys know the experience. If you go out, you have too many drinks, and you come back, and the next day you feel like crap. When you feel like crap, you probably perform like crap. And But you know, right? That's because, well, I drunk too much, so I'm hungover, or whatever the case may be. There are other things that can stress your liver, especially if you're a strength athlete. And by strength athlete, again, I'm talking powerlifter, strongman, bodybuilder, whatever. So, first of all, let's say, like me, <laughs> you have all these aches and pains, and so you self-medicate with a lot of NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, so stuff like Motrin and Aleve. Well, guess what? Those can elevate your liver enzymes too, and in the long run, they can decrease performance. They can lead to long-term complications, and I don't really recommend long-term use of those products. However, short-term use, they're incredibly useful for, for mitigating acute joint pains. Now, here's something even more common. Just heavy training alone can stress your liver. Think about it. If your body gets pissed off at you because you go out and have a few too many drinks, how much more pissed off is it going to be if you go out and you deadlift 500 pounds for <laughs> five sets of 10 because you felt like it, because you want to be stronger, or look better, whatever the case may be, right? These things, heavy training, are going to elevate your liver enzymes. And if you look at kind of the... Uh, the recommended guidelines for getting one of these tests, you're actually supposed to lay off heavy exercise for seven to 10 days before you get the test. Well, for most of us, that's not reasonable, right? So that's why in the IGTV video, I suggested if you know you're going through a period of high stress, you supplement with some liver enzymes to keep that liver healthy, to keep your body healthy and functioning well, okay? So that was AST and ALT. I wanna to touch on one more point related to those. Note that the standards for AST and ALT are pretty conservative. So if you go and you have mild elevation in AST, ALT, mild elevation can actually look pretty scary in terms of the numbers, um, but it, these numbers can go up into the hundreds, whereas the baseline is usually, usually around 50. Uh, and I'm sorry, I don't know the units on that, but 
uh, they can get in the hundreds before you have a serious issue. I am not saying, please do not misinterpret and say, well, if your liver enzymes aren't in the hundreds, you're good to go. Not at all. If your liver enzymes are elevated, you need to find out why. You need to talk with the doctor to figure out how you can get them back in line. But you don't have to be freaking out and go to the hospital because your AST is a little bit higher than the baseline, okay? Now let's go to kidney because these are even more even more misleading, I think, than the liver enzymes. So if you get a typical blood test, you're going to have two major indicators of kidney function. Those are creatinine, which I'm probably pronouncing wrong, and BUN, which stands for blood urea nitrogen. So cre creatinine, cre creatinine, however you say it, it's a byproduct of basically your muscles being broken down, right? So you train really hard, you break down the muscles, your body's gonna excrete this creatinine. And that's a measure, indirect measure, of how hard your kidneys are working. The problem with this measure is that it's highly dependent on how much muscle mass you have. So if you're somebody who has far more than the average amount of muscle mass, well, guess what? Even if everything's working great, your creatinine number is probably gonna be a little bit elevated because you have more muscle that's being broken down every time you train, right? It's pretty common sense, but a lot of people don't know this. A lot of doctors don't know this, all right? And so you go to the doctor. Back in high school, I had this problem. In high school, right? The doctors were like, are you on steroids? I was like, no, I wouldn't even know how to get steroids. I'm 16 years old. But I had above average levels of night muscle mass, so that number was elevated. If... I'll, I'll come back to that in a second. Uh, BUN, blood, urea, and nitrogen, this is going to be impacted by how much protein you eat. So if you're somebody, you're a bodybuilder who's eaten, you know, two grams of protein per pound of body weight, well, your BUN might be a little bit elevated, right? That doesn't necessarily mean your kidneys are fucked up. It could. It could not. This is why you have to talk to a doctor. Here's the real, real big problem. On those blood tests, you're going to see a number called EGFR. This is... I can't pronounce these words to save my life, guys. This is an E, the little E stands for estimated, all right? It's estimated GFR. It's an indirect measure of your kidney function. GFR is the gold standard for the measure of kidney function. That test is very expensive, and usually doctors aren't going to prescribe it unless there's a big issue. So they use EGFR instead to kind of estimate, well, what would your GFR be if we gave you this test? Here's the problem with the EGFR. It is completely derived from creatinine, 100%. You take the creatinine number, you plug it into a mathematical equation, you get the EGFR. It's restating the same freaking number. So if your creatinine levels are elevated, your EGFR is going to be too low. Well, that's not giving you any more information, right? That's just still telling you you got too much muscle mass. Well, too much relative, right, to the average person. So... If this is a concern of you and your doctor, what you need to do is get a cystatin C test. I am really sorry for butchering all these words. Cystatin C test. This is measuring the same thing. It's an indirect measure of kidney function, but it is independent of your muscle mass or even your body weight, okay? So even these big muscular guys, they should, assuming their kidneys are working properly, going to have normal levels on the cystatin C test. I'm going to put these words down in the description below so you guys don't have to decipher my butchering of them. So for me, my creatinine levels are always, always elevated. And I freaked out the first time that happened. So I went and got the cystatin T test. I paid out of pocket, which was like 300 bucks for the test. Came back perfectly normal. And after that, I was like, well... I'm not going to stress too much about this number as long as it kind of stays where it is, right? That's the other thing. You want to be tracking these me metrics over time, right? The fact that one of these is elevated to me is a little less concerning than if they're changing. They're all over the place all the time, all right? So hopefully this gives you, A, a little bit of comfort if you're not taking any steroids and your numbers come back screwed up, B, it gives you more things to discuss with your doctor so you can make knowledgeable decisions about your body. And C, it helps you learn how fucking complicated this all is so you don't go out and try and just half-ass it yourself. It's not safe. I'm sorry to keep harping on this, but there are good doctors out there that will work with you and understand you know, what you're pursuing, why you're pursuing it, and they can help you do it in a safe and healthy manner. But when you get 
turn into a lazy, you know, person and just kind of decide that you're going to do these on your own and hope it works out for the best, well, I can't, I can't really endorse that. So again, overall message, see your doctor. Second message, can't always trust the blood test. Make sure that you understand why they're coming back screwy. And uh, if necessary, if your doctor says it's necessary, then you take steps to correct that. Uh, shameless plug, if you guys would like products to help keep your liver and, and uh, liver and kidneys healthy, I strongly recommend that you pick up some Tudka by Revive Subs, or uh, you can pick up some of their kidney formula, which is also really great. Okay, you can use my code BEN20. Uh, that's my shameless plug for the day. Sorry about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it informative. Please give me feedback, not feedback about my shitty whiteboard, all right? I know it's shitty. Um, but feedback about anything else I really appreciate. And I'll try and keep these videos coming. I apologize that I kind of dropped the ball on the daily prep videos. The fact is nobody was watching them, so they're not that much fun when nobody's watching them. But prep is going great. I'll give you guys an update later in the week. But we're ahead of schedule, under budget, and I'm feeling good. So I will see you guys next time. Make sure you think strong and train hard.